Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Backer and welcome to Off the Wall Novels. Joining me as my co-host is one Pringle Backer, the lineulated parakeet. He might fly away at some point through this video. Um, today we're going to talk about how to read a hard book. But first let's ask the question, why would you want to do this? Is this just to be pretentious? Is it to condescend to the other people around you? Is it to get a little pat on the head from your teacher or to feel like you're standing shoulder to shoulder with some of the greatest minds in history? The answer is kind of. But I don't really like this characterization of reading hard books because I think that there's so much more to reading a hard book than just the difficulty of it. But sometimes people get caught up in the fact that a book is hard and they think that that would be the only reason to read it is for some sense of accomplishment or to reflect on you in some way so that people think that you're super smart. Um, and I would say if that was the way it was, it would not be very effective. People don't really seem to care that you've read a hard book. I think the greatest compliment I've ever received for reading a hard book is, wow, you read that? That's hard. You know, and, and God, I've been riding that high ever since. But also, I don't like this characterization because like, one, it would make me look really bad that I'm so insecure that I have to bolster my reputation by reading books. Like what a, what a pathetic life I would be living if that was the case. But then also, these books are actually about things. They, they depict characters and scenery and imagery and ideas that are really cool and can bring a lot of entertainment, but also a lot of thought-provoking shifts in the way that you think. Um, and they give you this feeling, I think, of the sublime or being confronted with something that's bigger than you, like standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon. And it's kind of like that immense feeling of joy when you change the way that you think about something. And so people frequently use the words like, this blew my mind. And I've always liked that in movies and in books that somebody who is further down the road than you as a creative or as a writer or just as a person, they're giving you access into the way that they think about things and constructing things in such a way. And it takes them years and years to get these books put into the exact order with all the words in the right way that they want them. And then you get to experience it perfectly as a finished product on your first read through. And it can blow your mind. One more thing of preamble before we get into how to read some of these harder books is that it's just such a mischaracterization of what is to be gained from reading these books. Like Thomas Pynchon, for example, gets a big reputation for being hard, but that almost makes it seem like you're reading Gravity's Rainbow or The Crying of Lot 49 or Against the Day and just going like, ah, yes, and like twisting your mustache. And like, that's not really the vibe you get from reading Thomas Pynchon. Like Thomas Pynchon is psychedelic and funny and it approaches slapstick at different spots. And He's pulling imagery from like pop culture and from movies and from this like cartoonish sensibility sometimes. And so the idea that it's just hard is, is just so, it's such a narrow way to look at this like beautiful way of writing and of thinking that can really shift your perspective. And uh, it, it just, it really makes me mad. So that's one of the reasons I'm making this video. Um, same with the book Nightwood. Nightwood is considered one of the hardest books in the English language. You can see that in different articles. But like, I think that if you finish reading Nightwood and you take something from it, you're not just like, well, that that was hard. That was just so hard. It's like, it's, it's a really beautiful portrayal of human relationships and the feeling of absence in another person that you love and there's a part of them that you'll never have access to, but you want to really own them to a certain extent in a problematic way, but they're another person and you can't really ever get at them. And that's like a very complex idea, but also very relatable in a way that there's sort of like an absence at the core of everything. And it relates more to a feeling of longing than to some like intellectual idea that you need to really wrap your head around. So. Again, that's not to say that Nightwood is a breezy read, but it shouldn't only be characterized for being difficult. Okay, so I think I've gotten enough of that out of the way. So here are some tips for how to read a hard book. I think number one is just the perspective of don't worry about the quantity of the books that you read too much. Now, I signed up for the Goodreads challenge for 2021 and said I was going to read 50 books this year. And only a few months into 2021, it's looking like that's probably not going to happen. And I think that's because like some of the books I'm reading, for example, I read 
Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, that didn't take me very long, you know, because I wasn't really studying it. I was just enjoying it. So it's a page turner. But now I'm reading Under the Volcano by Malcolm Lowry. And this is kind of a tough book. The prose is, is complex. There's a lot of historical references. The sentences are really long. And so in order to get what I want to get out of Under the Volcano, I can't just breeze through it. You know, I want to make it worth it. And so even though I set my goal for 50 books and I'm probably not going to, to manage that, it really makes me actually sit down and focus and appreciate the book that I'm reading. That like, I don't want to rush through under the volcano just so I can get my numbers up. I want to appreciate it and learn something from it as a reader and as a writer. So don't worry about quantity too much. It's better to get a whole lot out of one book than to just get into book consumption. So you can post online afterward that you read 250 books or 500 books in a year. Um, I mean, if you can do that, good for you. But like, I, I just would not be able to do that and actually get something out of what I'm reading. It's a lot better to actually appreciate and take in the book and to, and to really study it, in my opinion, than to just make another notch on your bedpost. You gotta love that book, baby. Okay, so another piece of advice that I have is don't be afraid to start over. This is something that I've done with different books in the past, specifically Nightwood by Juna Barnes and then V by Thomas Pynchon, that I got about halfway through both of them and I just, I had to tap out and just start over because the prose was so complex and the ideas were so sprawling that I started to lose a sense of what the characters were after and who was who and some of the characters' names were all blending together for me that I just had to completely start over from scratch. And again, if you're in this mentality of like, gotta finish the book to get onto the next book to get your numbers up, then this is gonna feel like a waste of time. But what's really rewarding about this is that the prose that seemed really difficult on that first half read through really opened up for me when I went over it a second time. I was also a little bit more attuned to some of the themes that they were going for and some of the things that recurred on different chapters and different sections of the book that I got a better sense of like the totality of, of the ideas that they were going for. And that I think is one of the most rewarding things in reading, in my opinion, is to have prose or a writer or a book or a style that seems just like totally opaque to you and to slowly watch it open up. And this sort of mentality and process to approach reading with, I think has led me to some books that I would probably not have been able to appreciate unless I put a little bit of work into them. And so I've mentioned this on the channel before, but reading like David Foster Wallace when I was 18, that was a little bit beyond me, but I still got a lot out of it. And it trained me to read somebody like Thomas Pynchon. Now, if I'd tried to read Thomas Pynchon at 18, I don't think I would have been able to do it. I wouldn't have enjoyed it, and I probably just would have quit and moved on to something else. But by training myself with David Foster Wallace, who was just a little bit beyond me, I moved on to Thomas Pynchon in uh, like my early 20s. And then with him, and I mean, even now, to be honest, he's still just like a little bit beyond me, just like a little bit and, and plenty of moments in his books, I'm just like, I don't know what he's going for. But getting more used to that style that's a little bit beyond me got me to read Nightwood. And I started Nightwood, there'd be no way I would have been interested in reading Nightwood before I'd read a couple Thomas Pynchon books. And then now that I got comfortable with Nightwood, I was able to approach Under the Volcano, which is, I think, the most complicated prose that I've read in a while. And it's also a lot longer than Nightwood. So another tip for reading a book that's hard is don't go too crazy with making notes or looking up every single reference. Um, this is something that I've struggled with in the past because I, I wanted to like really put in the work and make sure that I understood what the author was saying. But for some of these like bigger and especially like longer books that are very difficult, you're just, you're not going to get everything on the first read through. And I think this turns a lot of people off because they're used to reading a book where you need to know all of the characters and every plot point. But some of these bigger books that have more complex prose and bigger ideas in them, that's not really how it works. You just kind of let it wash over you and you take what you want from it. And it would almost be impossible to understand everything on one read through, and that's okay. Um, this doesn't make it any less enjoyable in my opinion. It's just a different approach to storytelling and to reading that it's not about trying to piece together everything and make sure that you really grasp everything on the first read through. It's just letting the author take you on a ride and enjoying the imagery that speaks to you as it goes and then 
Maybe on a second or a third reading, you can piece it together a little bit more and appreciate every little image and historical reference. But I think I have found myself in the past when preparing a book that I was gonna like do a video on for this channel that I'd like read a paragraph and then find that I'm writing like two paragraphs about it in my notes. And by the end of it, I'd have like a 15 page document of all these notes that I was gonna talk about. And that's just like cumbersome to deal with for a video. But then also that's not really the purpose of notes, I think for a first read through on a book. A good, I think, approach to making notes on a first read through is just give yourself little reminders should you lose your place a little bit farther on. Like when a character is introduced, sometimes I'll mark the page down with the character's name on it. And so that if they get mentioned again later and I kind of forgot who that character was, I can reference the note and then flip back into the book to see the way that they were introduced. Because a lot of times a character introduction gives some sense of what the author wants you to think about them throughout the story that you're reading. Um, more on this with historical references, this can really kill your momentum. And I find that every time that I sit down to read a book, I come at it with a little less enthusiasm than when I first started. And so if I kill my momentum by looking up a lot of the historical references on a first read through, it, it makes it a lot harder to get a good pace and even finish it. I would say, unless you're just like, totally lost as to what the historical reference is and you feel like it's really hurting your understanding of the scene, don't worry about looking up every single one. More on this note too, I think that in order to appreciate some of these books, it's actually to read them kind of quickly. Laboring over every little moment kills that momentum, like I said, but also sometimes the ideas are presented in such a long-winded way, they're actually easier to see and they seem a little smaller and more compressed if you read them out loud and quickly especially like Thomas Pynchon and David Foster Wallace, who are known for having really long sentences, laboring over all of the little details makes it actually more difficult to understand. So get that momentum going. You got hundreds of pages ahead of you. Just try to get through it and read it out loud if you have to as well. The last thing that I wanted to discuss in this video is that don't be afraid to abandon the book. If it's a little bit too hard or if you're not enjoying it, then Nobody is gonna be impressed if you just powered through just to say that you finished it. You might get your Goodreads numbers up a little bit higher and a select few people might be like, wow, you read a hard book, but it's, it's really not worth it. I still think there's a lot of value in reading a hard book. It's high effort, high reward as far as I'm concerned, but I've abandoned plenty of books that I thought I was like supposed to read because they were a part of the canon. And I just had to admit, and I was a little disappointed to admit it, but I just wasn't really getting anything out of it. This has been my relationship with the book Ulysses that I crack maybe once a year to see if I'm ready to read it. And after just a couple of pages, I'm just like, I'm not excited by the writing, the imagery, the characters, and I love The Dead by James Joyce, but unfortunately his novels just don't do it for me. Now, I could make a video on this channel five years down the line and be like, guys, I was so wrong. But the thing is, it makes a lot more sense to actually enjoy the book that you're reading than to read it just because it's it's in the canon or just because it's super tough. So I hope something that I mentioned in this video today will help you approach some of these books, or I hope that you enjoyed some of the ideas that I shared. I'm gonna go ahead and give Pringle a bath. Goodbye.